welcome to the 2020 Veterans Day Assembly. No, this is not how we would normally have it. In fact, I would love to be in a room full of you guys, full of veterans from our families, full of speakers from whatever branch of the army. But today we are going to observe Veterans Day from our homes. So make sure that at this point in time, if there's a distraction that you have around you, make sure you silence that distraction. We are honoring our veterans today. So if you have a TV on, why don't you push mute or turn it off? If family members around you are gathered and they are doing their own thing, why don't you invite them in so that we all together can honor our veterans today, even though it's not the normal way. So welcome to our official Veterans Day of 2020. What is Veterans Day? And why, why do we even celebrate it? Okay, it's time to get our learn on with fun facts about Veterans Day. Starting off, do you even know what a veteran is? Now, do you? It's cool if you don't, because I got you. A veteran is any person who served for any length of time in any military service branch. A military service branch can either be the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, or the Coast Guard. Now, going back in time, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed November 11th as Armistice Day. So it wasn't always called Veterans Day. This was done on the one year anniversary of the end of World War I. A cool celebration that is done on this day as well is two years later after Armistice Day was founded, an unknown American soldier was laid to rest from World War I. They buried him at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, DC. The burial spot that is still represented today on Veterans Day is called the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Going back in time as well, an act that was approved on May 13, 1938, made November 11th a legal holiday known as Armistice Day back then. So although Armistice Day originally celebrated those who died in World War I, this eventually changed too in the early 1940s. It was changed to honor all veterans at that point. Now, flipping back in time, yeah, Veterans Day was originally Armistice Day. And this all changed in 1954. President Eisenhower officially changed the name of the holiday from Armistice Day. And now, of course, as you can see today, we celebrate by calling it Veterans Day. Another thing about Veterans Day is a lot of people get it confused with Memorial Day. But I'm about to help you out. You see, Memorial Day honors American service members who died in service to their country or as a result of injuries from battle. With Veterans Day, Veterans Day honors all American veterans that are living or dead who served their country honorably during war or during peace. Now, taking you to school and giving you a little spell check, a lot of people misspell Veterans Day by using an apostrophe. But with the Veterans Day spelling, it's all about the veterans, meaning a bunch of veterans, not the fact that they own the day, but it's a day for veterans, plural. A little spell check for your grammar, you know what I mean? And I hope you've enjoyed those fun facts about Veterans Day. I'll see you next time. Peace.
Today is a day for remembering our vets. In fact, there are many ways that on November 11th, we honor and celebrate our veterans. Today, we are just spending some time really focusing in on who vets are, playing some patriotic songs to help us remember the freedoms that we have, remember what was sacrificed for us. And now we will hear a veteran read a story called The Wall by Eve Buntings. The Wall. This is the wall, my grandfather's wall. On it are the names of those killed in a war long ago. Where is grandpa's name, I ask? We have to find it, dad says. He and I have come a long way for this, and we walk slowly, searching. The wall is black and shiny as a mirror. In it, I can see Dad and me. I can see the bare trees behind us and the dark flying clouds. A man in a wheelchair stares at the names. He doesn't have any legs. I'm looking, and he sees me looking and smiles. Hi, son. Hi. His hat is a soft, squashed green and there are medals on it. His pants legs are folded back, and his shirt is a soldier's shirt. A woman old as my grandma is hugging a man old as my grandpa would be. They are both crying. Shh, he whispers, shh. Flowers and other things have been laid against the wall. There are little flags, an old teddy bear, and letters weighted with stones so they won't blow away. Someone has left a rose with a droopy head. Have you found Grandpa yet, I ask? No, Dad says, there are so many names and they are listed under the years when they were killed. I found 1967. That's when my Grandpa died. Dad runs his fingers along the rows of print and I do too. The letters march side by side like rows of soldiers. They're nice and even. It's better printing than I can do. The wall is warm. Dad is searching and searching. Albert A. Jensen, Charles Branowski, George Munoz, he mutters. His fingers stop moving. Here he is. My grandpa, I ask? Dad nods, your grandpa. His voice blurs, my dad. He was just my age when he was killed. Dad's rubbing the name, rubbing and rubbing as if he wants to wipe it away. Maybe he just wants to remember the way it feels. He lifts me so I can touch it too. We brought paper. Dad puts it over the letters and rubs it on with a pencil so the paper goes dark and the letters show up white. You've got parts of other guys' names on there too, I tell him. Dad looks at the paper. Your grandpa won't mind. They were probably friends of his anyway, I say. Dad nods. Maybe so. A man and a boy walk past. Can we go to the river now, Grandpa? The boy asks. Yes, the man takes the boy's hand, but button your jacket, it's cold. My dad stands very still with his head bent. A bunch of big girls in school uniforms come down the path. The teacher is with them. They are all carrying more of those little flags. Is this the wall for the dead soldiers, Miss Gerber? One of them asks in a loud voice. The names are the names of the dead, but the wall is for all of us, the teacher says. They make a lot of noise and ask a lot of questions, and all the time, Dad just stands there with his head bowed, and I stand beside him. The girls stick their flags in the dirt in front of the wall and leave. Then it's quiet again. Dad folds the paper and that has Grandpa's name on it and puts it in his wallet. He slides out a picture of me, one of the yucky ones that he took in school. Mom made me wear a tie. Dad puts the picture on the grass below Grandpa's name. It blows away. I get it and put it back and pile some little stones on top. My face smiles at, up at me from under the stones. Grandpa won't know who I am, I tell Dad. I think he will, my dad says. I move closer to him. It's sad here. 
He puts his hand on my shoulder. I know, but it's a place of honor. I'm proud that your grandfather's name is on this wall. I am too. I am. But I'd rather have my grandpa here, taking me to the river, telling me to button my jacket because it's cold. I'd rather have him here. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial honors the men and women of the armed forces of the United States who served in the Vietnam War. Honored are listed the names of those who gave their lives and those missing in action. The memorial is located in Washington, D.C. On the long black wall are more than 58,000 names. On this day, Veterans Day, we set aside time to honor the men and women who gave their time away from their families to protect the freedoms we enjoy today. Over the years, we have created songs, we've written books, we've built memorials. And in this picture on the right, you will notice a bunch of gravestones with flags. That is a brief glimpse of the Arlington National Cemetery that has been mentioned prior in this assembly. This is a place where many soldiers are buried, but it is also the location of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And in this location, it is a place where families can go to grieve the losses of their soldier that has not returned home from war. What you see on the left is poppies. And Remembrance Day is all about poppies. It's all about remembering our soldiers. And in this next clip, we will hear Charlie Brown explaining the story of poppies. question was asked at the very end of that clip, what have you learned, Charlie Brown? 
So maybe this is a perfect opportunity for you to talk to the family member in your home, or maybe it's a time for you to talk to your teacher about what does a poppy mean? What does it represent? Because oftentimes, especially if we were in an assembly, we would have a poppy and it's a flower. It represents something, it means something. It is our way of remembering, which is why it's called Remembrance Day. It's also called Veterans Day. In this next section, we are going to begin to view veterans that are connected to the Olympic View community. If you do not see a veteran that represents your family, I apologize profusely. Um, this has been something that has been put together on the side by me using some of our past slides that we've had in past veterans assemblies. So as you see the families go by, I know that not all the names can I read during this time, but just know and understand that we in Olympic View serve, veterans serve. The reason why our virtue of the month is service is because this month represents the service that a lot of people have had for them. The freedoms that we have in America, the freedoms that we have as individuals in our school systems is because someone has served, someone has fought for us.
Thank you so much for coming. Not that you had a choice. Thank you, though, for coming to our Veterans Day Assembly. Friends, in this season of giving, do not forget that we are in service. And some of you may have already started doing some service things around your house. Don't stop doing those things. But as we think about our season of giving, as a class, perhaps brainstorm ways that you can give this week. I have put some suggestions on the screen. Maybe your family knows a veteran. Maybe your own dad is a veteran or mom. But maybe your parents know somebody who's a veteran. How about you write a letter to them? I'm telling you, receiving a letter, especially during COVID, and especially if these people are older people, it is the biggest blessing you'll ever receive. Maybe even give a phone call to a veteran in your family and thank them for, your, for their service. I think sometimes the best thing we can do also is when we are in a store, whether it's this week or beyond, oftentimes our veterans are wearing clothing or hats that show that they are a veteran. Parents, we need your help on this one. Sometimes our little ones don't know who a veteran is. But if you see a veteran this week or beyond, walk up to them six feet distance and thank them for their service. What other ways can you give this week? Have a wonderful week, everybody. And don't forget, you guys are all awesome and amazing and incredible, spectacular.